inflation uh, threat to pensioners? Yeah, you know, you know, the reality for a pensioner is every year he's drawing an income, trying to live off that, but the costs are increasing. Um, and, and in South Africa, we've, we've lived in an environment of high inflation, um, and it doesn't seem for us that it's going to change anytime soon. So definitely a concern for inflation or for uh, your retired investors. Well, you know, one of the pensioners' main gripes, or retired investors' main gripes, is interest rates. And with rising inflation, usually comes rising interest rates. So Correct. something to be happy about then. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a tough road for the retired investor and trying to, you know, supply that income stream for them. Um, <coughs> the the problem, I guess, for us is is that, you know, the Reserve Bank and all of them are trying to keep jobs around and keep rates as low as they can for as long as possible. Um, so, you know, with rising inflation, yes, interest rates should rise so they can combat that, and that would be a great relief for, for the retired investor. Well, we're looking at inflation of about 3.7% at this stage, according to the CPI basket. Where would you expect inflation to go from here? We've had the Reserve Bank saying that it should remain within targets until the end of next year, which is the forecast period they're looking at at this stage. So we're expecting it to edge up slowly towards 6%. Is that a threat at those levels? Um, you know, for us, we, we try not to look at it from a shorter term perspective. You know, you've got so many forces driving prices at the moment. Um, we, we try and take more of a medium to longer term view. And, you know, for us, if you took your, that view, more like seven, aver inflation to average about 7% over the next five, five to seven years. Um, you know, which is, which is not great for retired investors because you need your income to grow at that rate in order to live. Um, yeah, um, so in the short term, you know, it will edge up, but, but in the longer term, we're in an environment of, you know, high inflation in South Africa. We have, you know, structural inefficiencies in South Africa. You just look at your electricity price increases, you know, it's average 25%, 20 I think 11. there's another one coming in next month. Yes, um, you know, and, and the foreseeable future after 2013, it's, it's every, all indications are that it's going to be 15%. Um, you know, I, th I think I read a recent article about municipal rates. The average increase um, over 2010 was 46%, uh, year on year increase in municipal rates. You know, and those are costs that you have to pay. Um, and I think the highest one is 150% in Limpopo. Uh, unsustainable from, from our point of view. Okay, Lawrence, retired investment investors don't want to take big risks. So how do you put together a portfolio where they can beat inflation comfortably so they can live normally going forward? You, you know, good question. For, for us at the moment, you know, looking at South African assets, we, we really truly feel that it's, it's quite expensive. Um, and going into fixed bonds and listed property, and even in the equity market, if, if they so wish to, it, it's relatively expensive. Where you can, uh, you know, currently get an inflation-hedged income stream or an, a return is an inflation-linked uh, bonds. Um, you know, other things we're currently looking at is corporate debt, floating corporate debt, where if rates rise, you know, you get a benefit there. Um, and, and, and preference shares, which, which are kind of attra attractive at the moment. What sort of return above inflation would you like to get for investors? Um, just looking at the market at the moment, you should currently not take anything less than uh, inflation plus 3%. That is currently what the government is guaranteeing on inflation-linked bonds. I think it's about 2.75, but you should not be accepting anything less than that. If you want to take on a little bit more risk, uh, let's say property, we're looking at historically you got inflation plus seven percent um, you know and those those are returns that that you know depending on your inflation outlook and from a Marriott perspective if you're looking from a medium term point of view inflation we think at least seven percent you need a return of about 14 percent from property or to be able to get an acceptable return from your investment and we know the property last year delivered well and well in excess of that is that likely to be the case going forward, though? Yeah, good, qu good question. You know, for us, we feel last year's returns in the fixed bond and the property market was largely a factor of foreign inflows, looking for high yields in South Africa, and, and the property market follows the bond market from a yield perspective. Um, you know, and, and secondly, you've got lower inflation expectations priced into the market currently, you know, and we think that's not sustainable. So to answer your question going forward, fixed interest bonds and property we would, we would be staying clear of at the moment. Well, we have the Rand currently quite strong, trading below 7 Rand to the dollar. Many uh, analysts suggesting now's a good time to take money offshore. Would you be recommending that to the retired investor, though? Um, we certainly would recommend um, taking some of your money offshore. Um, the difficulty is, you know, you don't want to take on too much risk. But from our perspective, the value is offshore. 
Um, South African assets we feel is quite expensive. So if you can diversify and take some money offshore, you're getting companies like AT&T at a forward yield of 6%. That's higher than you can currently get in the bank in South Africa. Um, you know, Unilever at 4%. Um, so you've got a big chance of getting real returns uh, in first world uh, economies at the moment. And would you be looking specifically at those big dividend payers? We, we do. Um, you know, our target market is the retired investor. We're looking for consistency in dividends, and the companies that I mentioned are exceptional uh, dividend track records. Um, so you can get those dividends, yeah. Anything in the local equity market that uh, offers uh, attractive returns for investors without being too risky? Um, we, if, if you know, we look at our, our dividend growth fund or our equity fund, we, we're really concerned. Four deals in the market of, in the all share of our 2.6%, and we feel a lot more comfortable at the region of 4 to 5% yields. Um, so where we've positioned ourselves is on conservative, you know, necessity stocks um, and rand hedge at the moment. We really do feel currency is going to weaken going forward. Um, and if you can go into something like British American Tobacco, um, you know, let's say a pick and pay that can pass on some food uh, cost increases and things like that, you should be okay.